today's video is a bit different from usual. I want to talk about NFTs, non-fungible tokens. There's a high chance you've heard of this word recently as of an enormous public hype currently taking place online. One of the most widely spread headlines recently is about Beeple, a 3D artist whose life has completely changed by selling his art as NFTs and earning a crazy amount of money. In a Christie's auction, an art piece by Beeple was sold for $69.3 million. And the crazy thing that gets so many people confused is the artwork is fully digital. So what is going on here? In this video, I want to tackle this complex world of NFTs, crypto art and the hype around it. Questions I attempt to answer here are what is an NFT? Why would you buy an NFT? What is the value of an NFT? Why are NFTs important for artists? And what are the arguments of the supporters and the opposition of this development? Because there has also been some controversy around the NFT space. Let's start. If you don't know anything about NFTs, cryptocurrencies or blockchain technology, this video is going to contain a lot of words you're not going to understand. However, I really want this video to be informative and useful for everyone, therefore you can view this video as a collection of sources I've gathered for you which each explain the points mentioned in this video in further detail. This video should serve as a starting point of your research and give you the basic superficial information to understand this topic and then provide you with links to all sorts of other videos and articles which clarify the points mentioned in this video. Therefore, I strongly encourage you to check out the description box of this video where I've left all the links and extra information. So let's begin with the overarching question of this video. What is an NFT? If you know this already, feel free to skip to this timestamp in the video. NFT stands for non-fungible token. An item that is fungible is an item that can be replaced. Here's an example. I have a 5 euro note and you have 5 1 euro coins. We could just exchange those and both be fine with that because the value of a 5 euro note is the same as the value of 5 1 euro coins. So in general we can state that money is fungible. The first key factor of an NFT is that it's non-fungible. It can't simply be replaced or exchanged. Let me give you an example of a non-fungible item. The original Mona Lisa. The original painting of Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci is stored and displayed in the French Louvre Museum. The painting holds so much value thanks to the history and authenticity which make the original painting irreplaceable. You could go to the Louvre and photograph the painting with the best camera and capture as much detail as possible. The photograph will be worthless because it's just a photograph of the original. The originality and authenticity of the Mona Lisa is what makes it non-fungible. So an NFT is a token that is non-fungible. But what does token mean? The word token has many different uses. In the case of NFTs, a token can be understood as an item, but it exists only digitally. So let's get a bit more practical here. An NFT is a piece of art such as a 3D render, a digital illustration or a photograph which only exists once. But how is that possible, you may ask? Well, that's where the ominous word blockchain comes into play. Blockchain technology is a network and a protocol that is basically a list of records which contain further information such as time or transaction data and cannot be modified retroactively. So once something is done on the blockchain, such as a transaction, that action cannot be reversed and is forever documented on the blockchain and cannot be deleted. For a far better explanation, you can check out the links in the description. What's important for us is the fact that NFTs live on the blockchain. Everything that is ever done with them is documented forever on the blockchain. And it's this blockchain technology that enables these NFTs to become non-fungible. To clarify this point, let me give you another example. Let's say you send me this photograph by email. What happens is that you create a copy of the photograph which appears in my inbox. So then you still have the photo, but I also have it. This does not work on the blockchain. By uploading a digital file to the blockchain, it receives a unique address which makes the digital file unique. So if you would send this photograph as an NFT to me, I would receive it and you would not have it anymore. It's the digital equivalent of you handing me a canvas of your unique painting. After you hand it to me, I have it, you don't. A reasonable question often asked is, can't I just take a screenshot and then possess the art myself? Well, no, you can't really. 
You can take a screenshot, there's no technical barrier to do that, but this is the same as when you photograph the Mona Lisa. You have a picture of the original. The original NFT, however, has an implemented code which verifies its authenticity on the blockchain. So how does buying and selling NFTs work? There are many online marketplaces for NFTs. They are all different in some aspects and have their advantages and disadvantages. For example, Nifty Gateway is a well-known platform which is a strictly curated marketplace for NFTs. Not everyone can sell there, only artists who get chosen by the curators. On the other hand, platforms like OpenSea allow everyone to participate. You can simply create an account on their site and start buying and selling NFTs. One important thing I should mention is that the vast majority of these NFT marketplaces run on the Ethereum blockchain and only allow payments in Ether, which is Ethereum's cryptocurrency. In case you have no idea what cryptocurrencies are, I would again point out the links in the description. So as a seller or buyer, you usually connect your digital wallet to the marketplace. Your wallet contains some Ether, which you beforehand buy on a cryptocurrency exchange and transfer onto your private wallet. With that wallet connected to the marketplace, you can easily buy and sell NFTs. Now that we know what NFTs are and the basics of how it works, let's dive into the next question. Why would you buy an NFT and what's the value of an NFT? In my observation of the space and my research, I've found mainly two different reasons why NFTs are being bought. The first is the intrinsic value and buying simply for self-fulfillment. This is comparable to buying a photography book. A little while ago, I bought Maria Lack's photography book, Some Kind of Heavenly Fire. By the way, I really recommend that book in case there's any chance of you getting your hands on it. The reason for this purchase was that I want to support her as an artist because I love her work. Another reason is that while many of the photos in the book can be viewed online, the book also includes a lot of photos which I haven't seen anywhere online. And one more reason is that I'm human, and I like to have things, as weird as that may sound at first. I believe we humans identify ourselves with what we do and what we have, and having Maria Lax's book on the shelf on my desk acts like a little beacon that sends out a sense of motivation and inspiration to create art just as good as hers. So having the book only partially has an actual practical use. A print can decorate a wall, whereas a closed book on my desk doesn't really have a decorative use, I would say. It's simply nice to have it and occasionally look through it. And this is the kind of value that can be the reason to buy an NFT. The other reason I've seen from many buyers is to resell the art for a higher price and make a profit. This is closely related to the value of scarcity of NFTs. NFTs are truly rare. An artist can upload their art, create an NFT and define the scarcity by themselves by controlling the amount of that piece of art. I could upload this photograph and make it a one out of one, so the NFT only exists once. But I could also make editions and sell 100. In that case, each NFT has in their code which edition it is. For example, this is edition 63 of 100. Of course, when the artist doesn't make editions and only one single NFT exists, it is the most rare it can become. And the actual value that is paid is usually dependent on the artist and their relevance as well as the general demand. Therefore, if Beeple sells an NFT for $100 and the fastest person gets it, there's going to be a huge amount of people who would be willing to buy the NFT for $200 from that buyer who can now resell the art. A smaller amount of people would even pay $500. An even smaller amount of people would pay $1000 and so happens an auction and the person who bids the highest price gets the piece of art. This leads me to the next question. Why are NFTs important for artists? NFTs have one key feature which separates them from traditional art, royalties. Whenever an NFT is sold, not only the seller makes a profit, but the artist does too. Depending on the marketplace, you can set a percentage yourself. That percentage of the selling price is then what goes to the artist. The amount that seems to have become the common average among artists is 10%. This means when an NFT is resold for, let's say, 10,000 euros, then 1,000 of that goes to the original artist, and this continues for every resell that follows in the future. In traditional art, the artist does a one-time sell and never gets a penny from the resells. 
This drastic difference and increase in the potential of an artist making more earnings with the art is a key feature that makes NFTs so attractive for artists. So, I think you've gotten a decent grasp of what NFTs are, however, I would not be surprised if you don't understand the relevance of this yet and the actual value of NFTs, because it is fairly abstract. Therefore, I want to give you an overview of the supporting and the opposing arguments and elaborate on one opposing argument especially because it has caused a lot of uproar online, the environmental impact of NFTs. But let's start with what the supporters say. Mainly, NFTs are seen as a great way for artists and art investors to earn some money. Or a lot of money. As explained before, the royalties system of NFTs are a new possibility for artists to get one step closer to making a living with only their art. For the followers of an artist, this is a new method to support their artist. And for many investors, this is an opportunity to buy some art cheap and bet on the growth of the artist and the increase in value of the NFT. On the other hand, the opposition see the following flaws in the NFT space. NFTs are invaluable because they mostly do not exist in a physical sense. NFTs are a bubble and just a hype that is going to fade away and lose value over time. And then there's the big controversy around the environmental impact of NFTs. Let me elaborate. The problem here is the blockchain technology most of these NFT marketplaces are hosted on. There are multiple ways a blockchain can work and transactions can be validated. The two most known concepts are the proof of work concept and the proof of stake concept. I'll leave some links in the description again for better information on these two concepts. What we need to understand on a surface level for this video is that proof of work requires an enormous amount of energy. At the moment, most of the NFT marketplaces are hosted on the Ethereum blockchain, which is a proof of work blockchain. The issue many people see with NFTs are that these are a contributor to that huge amount of energy consumption. Online calculators have been going around which calculate how much carbon emissions you set free by just selling one NFT and the numbers shown are quite shocking. So how do the NFT supporters justify this? Well, many arguments exist and explaining all in detail would become too long of a video, but again, let's cover the surface. One argument is that NFTs themselves are not the issue, but the blockchain, so NFTs are not to blame. The way the blockchain works, the NFTs don't really make a difference whether they exist or not. The blockchain will continue to consume a large amount of energy due to the miners. The miners are those who consume so much energy, not the artists. Another argument, which is especially prevalent among Bitcoin and its blockchain, which also runs on proof of work, is that these systems are here to replace the old finance systems, which also consume a huge amount of energy. What's unfair here is that the energy usage of cryptocurrencies is easily recognizable thanks to their transparency, whereas the established financial institutions, such as banks, are not as transparent and probably use far more energy than we can evaluate. So by taking their place, the total amount of energy consumption will drastically drop. Apart from the arguments to justify the high energy usage, there are of course solutions being created. Well, actually they already exist, they're just not well known yet. As explained, the proof of work concept is what uses so much energy. But there's also this other concept called proof of stake, and this concept is far less energy intensive. The development towards a greener and cleaner NFT space is currently going well. The Ethereum blockchain is planning an update in which it shifts the entire system from proof of work to proof of stake, which would minimize the amount of energy used for everything that is hosted on the Ethereum blockchain. However, multiple NFT markets that run on proof of stake already exist. In my research, it seemed like the marketplace hiketnunk.xyz is currently the best known clean NFT marketplace. The difference here is that Hikiknunk doesn't run on the Ethereum blockchain, instead it uses the Tezos blockchain which also implies that payments are not done in Ether but in their cryptocurrency XTZ. Marketplaces such as this one which run on a lesser known blockchain and use much less energy exist already and are becoming better and more user friendly and new ones are popping up to join the competition. So I believe this environmental issue of NFTs is on a good path to being solved and we just need to give the development some time. 
So next I want to entirely shift to my personal thoughts and whether I see a future for photographers making use of NFTs. At the moment, we're seeing most NFTs being 3D art. I don't know why, but 3D artists seem to be the most established. However, NFTs can be anything. You can upload an image, a video, game items, music, whatever. So far, photographers haven't seemed to found their place in the NFT space. However, I think it would be amazing if this whole NFT space gets established and becomes a widespread mainstream method for artists to sell their art digitally. But for this to happen, NFTs first need to become clear for more people. If you've watched the video this far, first of all thank you. I imagine even with all the explanation I've given, you probably still don't quite grasp the actual value of NFTs. To be honest, I myself haven't entirely understood it yet. I understand it technically and rationally, but on an emotional level, I still find this rather abstract. But as an artist, I can't live from my art at the moment, not even close. But if NFTs are a method to bring me even just a step closer to that dream, I think it's worth investigating and exploring. As concluded after my points on the environmental issues, I believe this space is still in an early phase and it needs some time to become better, and once it does, I wish this can become a great place for artists to provide value to their followers and exchange with their following, and possibly bring artists a step closer to making a living with their art. I hope you enjoyed this slightly different video, I'm just really interested in this space at the moment and wanted to talk about it with you. So please, I encourage you to leave your thoughts in the comment section and begin a conversation within the community, I would love to read through them. At the moment, I am also working on releasing my first NFT, which will probably be available on hiketnunk.xyz, that's the platform that runs on the Tezos blockchain, which is a proof-of-stake blockchain, so it's not environmentally concerning. I have no idea if there is any demand for NFTs within our community, but I am motivated to dip my toes into the water in this space and just gather some more knowledge. Anyway, that's it for this week. If you enjoyed this or found it informative, leave a like, that would help out the channel to grow. Consider subscribing if you haven't yet, and I'll hopefully see you again next week in the next video. Until then, goodbye.